So now let's move on to a little bit more nuanced STEMIs. So I wanted to kind of touch on bundle branch blocks because bundle branch blocks make STEMI interpretation a little bit more difficult. So first, just a quick overview, what is a bundle branch block, right? A bundle branch block is a wide QRS that's greater than 120 milliseconds, meaning it's greater than three little boxes. So if we look over here, starting at the QRS complex, one, two, three, and it's going into four here, um, that's a wide QRS complex. And um, depending on what lead it is, it could be a left or a right bundle. There's a lot of criteria, especially from a cardiology standpoint, to determine whether something's a left or a right bundle. For your guys' all intents and purposes, all you have to look at is V1. 90% of the time, if you have a wide QRS complex and V1 is negative, it's going to be a left bundle branch block. If you have a wide QRS complex and V1 is positive, it's going to be a right bundle branch block. That's all you have to know. Wide QRS and is it positive or negative V1? Why are bundle branch blocks important in STEMIs? Is if someone has a new left bundle branch block, that's a STEMI until proven otherwise. The tricky thing about that is though, in the field, you're not gonna know if this is old or new, right? Rarely do patients have an EKG with them and rarely do they ever know if they actually had a history of left bundle or not. So it's really kind of good to note that if someone has a left bundle branch block and they're having chest pain, take that seriously because this could be a STEMI. There's specific criteria to determine whether someone has a STEMI with a left bundle branch block. So this is for patients that have a known left bundle and now they're having new active ischemia. There's three specific criteria um, for determining whether someone has a STEMI in a left bundle branch block and they're called the Scarbosa criteria. So these are all basically different EKG leads in a patient with a left bundle, but the criteria are that if you have a one millimeter ST elevation, a one little box in a lead that has a positive QRS complex and a positive T wave, that's concerning for a STEMI. If you have an EKG lead that has a negative deflection in the QRS and a positive T wave deflection, you have to have five millimeters or five little boxes or one big box of ST elevations. The reason for that is that patients that have left bundle branch blocks, their repolarization and depolarization kind of throws off the electrical circuit. So it's very common for patients that actually have a left bundle branch block to have ST elevations that are usually one or two millimeters high. So that's why it's helpful when we have another EKG, we can compare it to see whether these ST elevations are old or new. However, the criteria try to kind of um, supersede that by saying if someone has five millimeters, which is pretty significant, you usually won't get that from just repolarization, then you should be concerned for an ST elevation. The last criteria is if you have a negative uh, QRS complex deflection and then an ST depression of at least one millimeter in the precordial lead, specifically V1 through V3, then you should be concerned for a STEMI. So these are kind of the criteria. You don't have to have them memorized, but just basically know that people with left bundle branch blocks, the way to differentiate whether they're having a STEMI or not a STEMI is to use this to kind of help us figure out whether this is something we have to intervene on rapidly or if this is something that could wait. So let's look at an example here, right? So using our system, looking at the rate rhythm ax or rate rhythm ischemia. So rate looks a little bit tachycardic, maybe like 100 beats per minute. It looks a little bit irregular, right? We don't really see P waves, so maybe this is fibby. Um, but then looking at ischemia, top to bottom, left to right, starting off here, we have some ST elevations, or sorry, ST depressions and T wave inversions. Looking at two, this just looks kind of wonky in general, right? It's just kind of this waving up and down. You don't really see the QRS complex, maybe a T wave there, maybe there's some kind of ST elevation going on here. So then we go to the next lead and clearly here we see that there's an ST elevation, right? So here's the baseline, here's the QRS complex and here's a T wave. We have a clear, if not four, maybe five millimeter ST elevation. So that's important because if we kind of move through it a little bit here, we know that this is a wide QRS complex and looking at V1 to determine whether this is a left or a right bundle, it's a wide QRS that's negative in V1. And we remember what we just said, Negative in V1 means it's a left bundle branch block. So this is a left bundle branch block um, because it's negative V1 and it's more than three little boxes um, or greater than 120 milliseconds. If we look at three, right, there's clear ST elevations and this is definitely more 
than this one millimeter um, criteria in the Scarbosa. So QRS complex is positive here. T wave is positive. So we're looking at this little schematic here and you just need one millimeter elevation to be concerned um, for ischemia. Here we have four to five. So this would be a STEMI. So let's look at our next case. So we have a 63 year old male with a past medical history of high cholesterol who starts having a substernal stabbing chest pain while going to the bathroom. The chest pain continues after he finishes using the bathroom. It's there for about an hour. So he calls EMS. His heart rate's okay, it's 70. His blood pressure is not too bad, 104 over 75. So we get an EKG and you have it as follows. Take a look at that and then we'll look at the next question. All righty, same question as always. Do you call STEMI or not? Yes, no, maybe. Take a look at it. Tricky, right? How about let's get more information, right? Let's get more info. Patient comes to the ED, we get a nice, beautiful EKG, helps us out a lot. So looking at this first rate, right? Looks maybe a little bit slow, but not very bradycardic. Rhythm looks like normal sinus. Looking for ischemia, starting at one. Maybe some kind of ST depressions in one, but nothing that significant. Looking at two, this just honestly looks like a flat line. Maybe something's going on here, but we don't see anything clearly. Looking at three though, we see some clear ST elevations here, right? Remember, this is subtle. It's not that big, but it is an ST elevation. And what we see here is this giant Q wave. So this patient was probably having ischemia for a little bit. So we have an ST elevation, definitely more than one millimeter and this Q wave here. Moving to AVR, some T wave inversions. We know that's normal. AVL, some ST depressions here, AVF, Maybe some ST elevations, but I don't know if it would meet that one box criteria. So then moving to uh, B1, here we see that it's a wide QRS complex, right? It's more than three millimeters. It's uh, more than 120 milliseconds. And this would be a right or a left bundle. If it's positive, it will be a right bundle, right? So this is different than the one that we saw before because a majority of this QRS complex is above this baseline. So it's a right bundle branch block we see these ST or these uh, T wave inversions here. And then moving further in the precordial leads, we see some ST depressions here, maybe a little bit here, mainly T wave flattening and T wave flattening throughout these leads. So this patient has a right bundle branch block and some ST elevations in three and maybe an AVF. But because he was having ongoing chest pain and with this EKG, we took him to the cath lab. And this is what we found another 100% occlusion of his mid RCA. So same thing as before, like when we saw the LAD occlusion, if a patient has 100% occlusion in the artery, it doesn't always manifest as these massive tombstone appearing ST elevations, right? We take a look at here, it's just maybe one or two millimeters and we don't even see it in the contiguous leads as much. It's kind of hard, but he was having a massive 100% um, occlusion of his mid RCA. So we kind of pushed a wire through, placed a stent. As you can see, it was kind of curvy here. So it was a little bit tricky with stenting it, but we were able to open it up and then kind of create a vessel out of nothing. So he was able to walk out a couple of days later um, and he improved really, really quickly. The key thing here is he, was, he had a right bundle branch block, right? As we mentioned before, right bundle branch block is a wide QRS complex in B1 and it's positive in B1. The thing here is that they look, you the criteria for STEMI are the same as you would for any other STEMI, right? So there's no specific Scarbosa criteria for a right bundle branch block. The key thing here is that these EKGs are a little bit trickier because that wide QRS complex throws off the T-polar depolarization and kind of changes some of the axes on this EKG. So that's why this looks all funky into um, AVF isn't that kind of significant. And then you see obviously the changes in the precordial leads that don't make it that obvious um, for some of the ST depressions that we're seeing. So whenever you have a right bundle, 
Um, you know it's a right bundle because it's a wide QRS, it's positive in V1, um, and you just look for semis just like you normally would with the criteria that we have. So let's look at our last case here. So we have a 75-year-old man with no past medical history who developed substantial chest pain while working out for the first time in a year. Calls EMS, he has continued chest pain, he's a little bit tachycardic at 110, blood pressure is okay, 107 over 72, and then we get an EKG. So let's take a look at this EKG. All right, I'm guessing you guys could probably figure out what the question is. What do you want to do? Code STEMI? No, maybe, yes. Let's take a look at it. I love it. You guys are great. So this was the EKG we got in the ED, right? Um, not too tacky, normal sinus rhythm, looking top to bottom, left to right, looking at V1, we already see ST elevations in V1, right? If we go from this PR segment to this one, we see that there's at least one millimeter elevation there. Looking at two, nothing really there. Three though, we have these deep ST depressions. Looking at ABR, we see some Q-wave inversions, which are normal, but this QRS looks wide. We'll talk about that in a sec. AVL, not really any ST elevations here maybe some here, but this is kind of the transition point. So you can't really interpret this part of the EKG because it's already part of V2. Um, but we would expect it so, right? Because one and ABL are the lateral lead. So if there's ST elevations here, we should be looking here. ABF, some ST depressions, which is consistent with depressions in three and the inferior leads. Looking at V1, we see a wide QRS complex and it's positive in V1. So this is a right bundle branch block. And we see some T wave inversions here. Looking at V2, we see some ST elevations, right? This, if we draw a line from here to here, this portion is significantly elevated above the baseline. And it's definitely more than the two millimeter cutoff for V2 and V3. Looking at V3, same thing here, ST elevation. So you draw a line from the PR segment to the PR segment, definitely two millimeters. Looking at V4, continued ST elevations, a little bit less so, and then it flattens out. So we're concerned here, right? We take this patient to the cath lab, and this is what we find, another 100% occlusion right here of the LAD. So this artery right here is the left anterior descending, supplying a significant portion of the heart, and it was 100% occluded. So this kind of is an example of a patient with a right bundle branch block, right? Comes in with this chest pain. EKG is concerning, right? We see ST elevations in V2, V3, V4, all the precordial leads, which we talked about, if they're in more than just the uh, V1, V2 uh, leads, then we're thinking that this is LAD territory, right? And because of those elevations here and it was in one in ABL, we're thinking it's mo most likely um, the LAD. If it was isolated to one in ABL, we'd be thinking it's more circumflex. But we saw 100% proximate LAD occlusion. We opened that right up and then he got one stent, was, was able to walk out of the hospital in a day, in a day after that, so.